Hello, this is David Giese, the CEO and co-founder of Analytics. Today I'm going to be talking about a few central information entities that you need to document when developing a medical device, in particular user groups, user needs, and requirements. So in this diagram here, um, we see various information entities that we track. And each of these lines shows a traceability relationship uh, that you need to, to create. So what I mean by a traceability relationship is that, for example, each user need needs to trace back to one or more user groups. Um, then down here we have each requirement needs to trace back to one or more user needs. So in general, these are mostly many to many relationships. Um, so, okay, so let's start a, a little bit by talking about what are user groups, user needs, and requirements. So, um, a user group is a group of people who use your device. So this might be radiologists um, and oncologists. So perhaps the radiologist, they make the reads using your de medical device, and the oncologist reads the report that's produced. Perhaps another a uh, user group would be IT staff that need to maintain the software if it's deployed on premise. So in general, like the number of user groups you have is a bit subjective. It's, it's kind of based on what's useful. Like there's obviously many ways to model how many you have. And, and with all of these um, information entities, the goal is yeah, what, what's useful. Um, and so it can be useful to identify different user groups because they will potentially have conflicting or slightly different user needs and enumerating them and then going through what their needs are can help you identify, uh, again, the user needs. So user needs are specific statements about what each of those user groups needs out of the device. Why would they use it or what attributes they want it to have. These should be expressed in the language that the users would use, uh, which, which is often might be vague. So it might be for software, it's like it's easy to use or um, it's performant, like it loads things load quickly. So those are statements that um, are somewhat vague. You couldn't necessarily directly verify that that is met, um, you know, with, without, you know, perhaps talking to a bunch of users to understand if they all feel like it's met. So it's not it's not very precise. Uh, it might be written perhaps using like marketing type language. Um, so then we've got requirements. So requirements are different than user needs in that they need to be verifiable. You need to be able to write a procedure, perhaps a unit test or some sort of inspection or end-to-end -end test or so on, that could, could ensure that that requirement is met. Um, and requirements are really kind of at the core of all of this here. It, it defines like what your device does, what, it, you know, Maybe it's, um, the, you, you could think of a, a number of these, like maybe it's like only admins are allowed to configure the PAX IP address. Or, um, you know, if maybe you have a user need that says colorblind users can use the device and the requirement is there's no information uh, that's communicated using only color. And that could be verified by inspecting every user interface component, every report or so on uh, that is colored and saying, yeah, is there some way a colorblind person could get the same information that's represented in the color? Um, so that, that's an example where the verification is not done with a software test. So re requirements are at the center here. And there's a certain way of writing requirements. Typically, um, you'll say it's like a condition and then the object and then shall do things. So it might be um, the user interface, the software's user interface shall not represent any information using only color. Um, so let's let's go through quickly the different traceability relationships here. So um, typically for a new device, you'll be starting with the user needs and requirements You'll, you'll enumerate a first draft of those, and then you'll start actually implementing the design, which can be decomposed into a set of system items. Um, so eventually you'll trace each requirement to the system item, which might be a software component that implements that requirement. Um, if in a, 
in a more comp like a, a SIMD or software and hardware device, some of these components might be hardware, um, but but there's that. So that's this traceability relationship right here. Um, I've, we've already talked a little bit about verification procedures. These are this traces to how you actually check that. Uh, and then of course, this is the record of actually having done those procedures. Uh, we talked about the traceability relationship up to user needs. Um, now the traceability relationship to risk. So as part of your risk management, you will have identified safety risks and, and security, cybersecurity risks. Uh, and some of these risks might be mitigated by the design of the device itself. And in that case, you'll, you'll need to write requirements for that mitigation. So um, perhaps if you have a hardware device that has some sort of failure, you might have a firmware check that ensures some value is within some range. And then you would write requirements around that firmware check. Um, and so not every requirement will be, will be mitigating a risk. So there might be many requirements that, that are not trace to a risk but but many of the risk and, and also there might be some risks that are mitigated through other means besides the design so for example uh, labeling like providing warnings to someone in a user manual um, which is not as not as optimal but um, the last traceability relationship that we have here is tracing requirements back to references and this this isn't really dictated by standard that you have to do this connection this traceability relationship but we find often uh, there are FDA guidance documents for particular types of devices or standards that will dictate a, a number of requirements. And it can be very useful to trace those back to the standards where those requirements come from. Um, so a few comments about writing uh, requirements. So good requirements are verifiable, as we've already mentioned. They're necessary, so you don't want to be adding requirements that you could remove. Uh, they're irreducible, which means it's you know some people write these very long requirements that are whole paragraphs long. The problem with that is um, it makes the traceability to the verification procedures less useful because let's say like how do you know if if this, there's several paragraphs? It probably has a lot of things in in those paragraphs that the device must do. And how, how can you check that each one of them is checked? Like it's easier to split it up into a bunch of smaller irreducible requirements and then trace the verification to each one of them at a time. Again, that's not something you have to do, but it's just a good a best practice. Uh, finally, uh, generally requirements don't prescribe a design. Uh, there's some caveats there, but usually the requirements should be stated in a way that would allow multiple designs and it's the job of the engineers to then take those requirements and come up with the best design that fits the requirements. Um, one reason why it's, it's better to not prescribe the design with the requirement is because uh, sometimes the design changes and it can be frustrating to have to keep rewriting your requirement, uh, your requirements when that happens. Now, sometimes like you might have something like the software shall be written using C like, or, or you might have some kind of design related requirement uh, that's that comes because, say, you know, from business, a business standpoint, you know that they're uh, that you need to use a certain language because everyone on your team knows that. Or maybe you need to interface with some other system and, you know, there, there can be various reasons. So there can be some design related requirements. Um, but in general, you want to avoid them. So I think that's a good overview. Um, we have a whole uh, article that goes through a bunch of frequently asked questions and also has a variety of examples of good and bad requirements, um, unverifiable requirements, unnecessary requirements, and so on. Um, and we, I suggest you take a look at that. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks a lot.